Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. Today we're going to be creating a remove unused item type script. Essentially this already exists inside of After Effects but we're going to create a more detailed version. So normally if you have a project loaded up, you have a bunch of files and some of them you don't use, usually to get rid of those you'll go to file, dependencies, and then you can say use remove unused footage, reduce project, or things like that. We're going to create a custom script that allows us to define what exactly you want to remove, whether it's images, video, or audio. Now this script is going to go through all of the compositions inside of our project. Then with a comment called found, we're going to mark any of the video, audio, or images that we did find used by the project. So then we can run through and delete everything that doesn't have a found comment outside of, of course, the compositions, folders, and any other items we don't need. So in this particular case, in this project, I have a couple items not being used. I have two audio files. Uh, I have a video here, as well as a couple of images. So if I go ahead and run the script and just click on remove, you can see it instantly goes through and cleans up my project for me. So now we can go ahead and get to work on this script. I typically like to just use it to remove everything, but of course you can select individual things to search for and remove. So without further ado, let's get started by opening a new JavaScript file. And we'll start off by making our UI. So we'll create a new window called main window. And this is going to be a palette window. We'll just call it remove unused items. And we'll have undefined size. Then we'll grab our main window and set the orientation from top to bottom, so column. So that way we have our remove group here and then our remove button below it. So first we'll make the group to have all of our uh, buttons here. So I'll just create a group called group one and I'll set this equal to our main window and we're going to add, instead of a group, a panel. If we add a panel, we can actually have this nice little outline and everything in here will be within our panel. So then we'll just say undefined size for the panel and the name we put for the panel will actually appear. So I'm just going to put remove. And then inside of this panel, we want everything to go from left to right. So we'll set the orientation up to row. And now we'll create a variable for each one of our checkboxes here. So I'll have my image check, my video check, and my audio check. Then I'm gonna set each one of these equal to group one and we're going to add a checkbox. Originally I was going to use radio buttons, but I figured this would give you more control. So we're going to call this image, and I'm also going to set the default value to on. So I'll grab my image check dot value and say one. One is the on state and two is false. All right, and same thing for the video and audio check. I'm just going to copy and paste this code here and change the name from image to video and audio. And then same thing, I can go ahead and change the checks here so that they're all equal to one. Then we'll need to create a group for our buttons. So we'll just have our group two here is equal to our main window. And we're gonna add a group, this time a normal group, with undefined size, and we'll call it group two. And although we're gonna only be adding one element of this, it's good practice to set the orientation up as well. And now we just need to add our button. So let's call it the remove button and we'll set this equal to group two. We'll add a button called remove. Now we just need to center and show our UI. So I'll grab my main window and center it. And then I'll grab my main window again and show it. Now if we go ahead and run this, our script is looking exactly the same as the completed version. Now all that's left to do is add our functionality built into it. One thing I just realized is that in the original example, I'm setting the audio check values to one, um, and I end up using a variable called image bool, video bool, and audio bool. This is how we check if they've checked this or not, and if we need to look and rem thus remove those items. Now, in order to change, we're gonna be changing the code a little bit from the original example, because instead of true, these aren't bools, this is just a binary one or zero value, so we need to change these when we get to that. Just a quick note in case if you had noticed that uh, during my explanation. So, now that we've defined our UI, what we need to do now is start setting up the main functionality of the script. 
Well, the main actuator of the script is going to be when we click on the remove button. So we need to grab our remove button and we're going to say on click equals a function. When we click on the button, we need to go through the code between these brackets and run it. So let's just uh, let's just take this out to a separate function. So we'll say remove items and we're going to have three arguments. We'll have our image check, our video check, and our audio check. And instead of just getting the checkboxes, we want to get their values, which like I just said, I thought they were booleans, but they're not, they're one or zero. So we're just going to grab their values for the remove items function. Then below our on click, we'll define this remove items function. And this time, instead of using the word bool, I'm going to say image num, video num, and audio num. A little bit different than the original example, but hopefully this will clear up some confusion. Now we'll set up a begin undo group and an end undo group. And we'll just call this cleaning items. Now anything we put between here will be easily undoable in just one single click. Now we'll set up a couple of arrays and variables for all of the data we're about to collect. We'll create an array called comps so we can store all of our compositions to search through. And then we're also going to create one for images, videos, and audio. And then finally, we're going to have a variable called item name, which is going to store the current name of the item that we're running through in our for loop. Speaking of for loops, let's go ahead and create our main for loop for our function here. Inside of here, we're going to run through all of the items within our project panel. So to do this, we're going to grab var i is equal to one, starting at item i. And for i is less than or equal to our app.project and the number of items in the entire project, increment i by one. Now each time through, we're going to grab our item name and set it equal to the current item that we're running through. This is just to save some space. The first thing we're going to check is if the current item is a composition. If it's a composition, we need to store it inside of the comps array. And we're going to be using the comps to go through all of the comps and say, okay, this, this video file here, it's being used. So we need to identify and tell the script that, hey, this file has been used. We don't want to delete it. So we're going to check if app.project.itemi, or the current item, is an instance of a comp item. This is a surefire way to know if something's a composition. So if that's the case, we're going to grab comps and push the current item. All right. Although we have checkboxes here and we're asking the user, do you want to remove images? Do you want to remove video? No matter what the case is, we're going to collect the images, video, and audio every time through. No matter what the user tells us, we're going to grab all of the data. It's not a whole lot, and it won't matter that much in the long term. So we're just going to get it out of the way here and get all of the stuff. So I'll say image checks, video checks, audio checks. Now there are ways to check whether an item is a video, audio, uh, and other specific properties. But today we're going to be using file extensions. That way we can completely customize what kind of items we want to remove. Let's say you did want to remove video files, but you didn't want to remove, say, MP4, but you wanted to get rid of all of your big MOV files. Well, luckily with this method, we can customize it completely. So under image checks, we're going to make an if statement just like this one. We're going to be checking if the item is an image. And if it is, we want to push it into the images array. So the first check, which is going to be similar for all of the checks, is going to be the same amount of code. We're going to grab the item name, which is the current name of the item. And we're going to do a method which I always love to use, and that is substring. If you're not familiar with substring, it basically lets us cut out a chunk of the text, or in this case, the file name. And what we're going to do is cut out the last chunk and check what the extension is. So basically, we're going to say grab the last three letters, and we're going to check if it's a certain file type. So to get the last three inside of substring, the, the first point is going to be the item name dot length minus three. So the length of our file, if we go to the very end, minus three, one, two, three, and we wanna go till the end. So we'll say from length minus three to item name dot length. 
and that will give us the last three characters. But as you can see right here, MP4 is capitalized. Sometimes they're lowercase. So we're going to take that whole string we just cut out and say dot two lowercase. And this is going to ensure that it's lowercase no matter what. And then finally, we're just going to check, is this equal to a file extension like JPEG? If it is, then we want to grab our images and push app.project.currentItem or item i. All right, and now we can just copy and paste this as many times as we need. And we'll change, in this case, JPEG to PNG. And then I can move down here to video checks. Instead of images, we'll change this to videos. And instead of JPEG and JPEG, we can say MP4 and MOV. And then for audio checks, again, the same thing. We're going to update our array name here and update the file extensions to MP3. And let's do wave as well. So now at the very end of our for loop, if we go ahead and say, let's write all of our videos out. We should have, let's see, one, two, three items that it finds. So if I run the script, click on remove, and it looks like we actually forgot an item name. We forgot to actually grab the name of the current item. So now if I run it and click on remove, you can see we get one, two, three footage items, which is completely accurate. So it looks like we're getting all of our layers correctly, which is good. Now we just need to go through, search if they exist, and if they don't, delete them. So below collecting all of our images, videos, and audio, what we're going to do is set up a couple more if statements. This is where we checked the bool last time. Instead of bool though, we're using num. So we're gonna check if image num is equal to one, which means uh, it's on basically, and we want to search for it. And then we're going to run the function called search comps, and we're gonna pass through all of our compositions, and in this case, our images. And then we'll do the same thing for our video and audio. So I'll say video num, and I'll change this to videos. And then I'll say audio num and change this to audio. So if you remember from my beginning explanation, we're essentially going to run through, collect all of our compositions. And if we find an item inside of our composition that we are using, then we need to mark it as found. After we've marked everything as found, then we need to go through and remove all of the actual AV items that are not found. So in this case, these audio files and this video have not been found, so those would be removed. And in fact, just so we can not have any issues, I'll remove all of these founds as well. So we need to first go through and search through our comps. So let's define the function search comps. And this is going to take our comps and some items, whether it's images, videos, or audio. Now we're gonna go through and define a couple of variables. We'll have this comp for the current comp, this layer for the current layer, and this source for the current source of the layer that we're gonna to reference to check it's the same that we've used before. So then we're going to go through inside of three for loops. So I'll say one for loop, two for loops, and three for loops. Inside of the first for loop, we're going to go through all of our compositions. So to do this, we'll say var i is equal to zero, i is less than our comps.length, and we'll increment i by one. Then we have a couple variables to fill in here, so I'll say this comp is equal to comps i, which is the current composition, and then we're gonna wanna go a layer deep. Now we have a cur our current composition. We want to loop through all of the layers inside of that composition. We need to go through and see if the certain layers are being used or not. So we'll grab a variable called e, set it equal to one, and for e is less than or equal to our current comp or this comp uh, dot number of layers, increment e by one. Then inside of here, we're gonna say this layer is equal to this comp dot layer e, and this is going to grab our current layer, which we're going to go one more level deep. For this current layer, we need to then check our items. Is the current layer equal to any of our images, video, or audio that we are currently bringing in? 
If it is, then we need to set the comment to found. So we're going to say var q is equal to our items.length minus 1. So we're going to start from the very top. Let's say we had two audio files. We would start at the very last one and make our way backwards. That way we can check, okay, this one doesn't exist, delete it. This one exists, all right, we want to change this to found, etc. So for q is greater than or equal to 1, or sorry, 0, decrement q by 1. Then inside of here, we're going to check if this layer dot source, so the source of the current layer, which you can get by right clicking reveal, you can reveal the layer source in project, and that's what it, the source is going to reference. So we're going to check if the current layer's source is equal to the current item that we're checking. If this is the case, then that means the, the layer itself exists and the item is being used. So we want to grab this layer.source and we're going to comment found. All right, so let's run it really quick. If we click on remove, and it looks like we just need to change item here to items. Make sure you don't mess up your naming conventions. Now if we run it, you can see we have a couple of our layers marked as found. That means they've been successfully found and linked and that they've been found in a composition. All right, so lastly, we've gone through and identified all the things that need to stay, which tells us what needs to be removed. So the last thing, after we've gone through and searched our comps, we need to delete the sort of unfound items. So if I go ahead and type in function unfound, we can define what that means. Delete unfound. We don't need anything in here. We're just going to run through and check if it says found or not, basically. So the first thing, we're going to run a normal for loop to go through all of the items, which standardly, I just say i is equal to 1 for i is less than or equal to app.project.num items increment i by 1. Then we're only going to need one check. There's two conditions inside of this check that we're going to need. The first is we're going to check if app.project.item i. We're going to check the type name. Now, if you reference the scripting guide and type in type name, it's going to return either folder, footage, or composition. And this is perfect for our purposes. Essentially, what that means is we can ignore our compositions and folders, which we need to do, and just check if it's footage. So if the type name is equal to footage, and we also want to check one other thing. If the current item uh, has a comment that does not equal found, then that indicates we want to remove it. So if this is the case, we're just going to say app.project.itemi.remove. And what I also just realized is we're removing these, so we need to go, uh, we need to start from the top and go to the bottom. So instead of starting at one, we need to start at num items and go until greater than zero and then decrement. So we'll start at the very top of the array and head to the bottom. That way when we remove something, the indices don't get screwed up. So now if we go ahead and run our script, click on remove, you can see we are now successfully removing all of the unused video, images, and audio inside of our After Effects projects. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. I know this is something that already exists in After Effects, but I didn't think there was enough customization involved, so I thought I would teach you how. And there was also this comment that asked for it. So thank you again for watching, guys. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button. Hit subscribe to be notified of when new things come out. Leave any comments if you have any questions or comments for future videos. And we'll see you guys next time.